Hello everyone, I'm Varun Ambar and I'm going to talk about uh, our work, a comparison of statistical relational learning and graph neural networks for aggregate graph queries. This is joint work with my collaborators, Sri Ram Srinivasan and Lisa Gator. So graphs are ubiquitous, it's all around us. Uh, if you've ever used Facebook, chances are underlying it is a social network. If you have worked with proteins and genes and their interactions, you're working with actually biological networks. If you have ever used search such as Google or Bing or interacted with Alexa or Siri, uh, underlying these systems are what are called as knowledge graphs. So these graphs are all around us and they're typically heterogeneous or multi-relational in nature. Uh, by that, I mean that these graphs have different kinds of nodes, different kinds of edges, uh, and they have an ontology defining them. So one issue though with all these different kinds of graphs are that although they are very large, they are almost always uh, incomplete. They contain either missing nodes, some missing edges, or it could even be something like attributes of these nodes or edges that are missing. In this talk, I'll be looking at uh, cases where uh, the nodes have labels associated with them and some of these labels are actually missing. So because of these uh, missing uh, node labels, we need to somehow first infer them before we can you know, use them to perform any kind of a reasoning or another upstream task. Traditionally, there has been two main approaches. Uh, one is what is called as statistical relational learning approach. Uh, this uses probability and uh, logic. Uh, and typically you define uh, a model using uh, a weighted uh, logical clause like the one that is shown here. And then uh, internally it uses this to generate some kind of a probability distribution over the set of possible values for these missing uh, nodes labels. And then you perform that and use that to perform some kind of inference. More recently, there is this uh, approach to use neural networks and its representational power uh, to perform inference uh, on these graphs. Uh, these techniques uh, make use of the neural network's ability to learn some kind of intermediate representation. So they club together the node, uh, the node attributes, the structure of the graph, the edges, and so on and so forth, learn some kind of a representation of these nodes, and then use these representations to perform uh, inference. So there are these two main approaches that people have looked at. Uh, so one issue what, between these uh, approaches and comparisons are that they almost always look at some kind of a locally decomposable metric, such as uh, node accuracy. Um, so the issue is that although these are very important, there are a bunch of global properties, uh, such as the number of bridge nodes, number of triads, which are very crucial for uh, understanding the graph, for example, uh, how polarized a graph is or how susceptible the graph is to attacks and how fast the influence can spread on these graphs. These things are typically captured by these global properties. And these global properties involve not just a node or an edge, but sometimes even the entire graph. Uh, so these global properties are important. However, uh, performance on node labels, individual node labels, that does not necessarily translate to good performance on these global properties. Uh, so in this work, I would like to uh, motivate the need for uh, studying uh, these different approaches uh, in their ability to uh, infer these global uh, properties and not just uh, locally decomposable metrics such as node accuracy. So here is a quick roadmap of the talk. First, I'll talk about aggregate graph queries, uh, something that can capture a large class of these global properties. Uh, then I show how these aggregate graph properties can be used to define several uh, global graph properties. Uh, I'll propose two different approaches to estimating them, uh, and then uh, I'll perform an evaluation uh, using three benchmark uh, data sets for these different approaches. So uh, what are aggregate graph properties? Aggregate graph properties capture uh, a large class of global uh, properties, and these global properties involve multiple nodes, edges, and labels. Uh, aggregate property, more formally, these aggregate graph queries uh, involve performing an aggregate function computed on a set of sub subgraphs uh, that satisfy some kind of a given Boolean condition.
Uh, these can be thought of as a function that takes as an input a graph and returns a real number as output. So here is an example uh, of an aggregate graph query. Here, this query actually computes what is called as edge cohesion. So what it is looking for is pairs of nodes uh, that are connected to each other. That means they have an edge between them and also belong to the same uh, class. Uh, so here, supposing I gave you this graph that you see on the bottom left, uh, there are actually five uh, pairs of nodes that have an edge between them and belong to the same class. So this is how you would mathematically uh, represent this query. Uh, so first you have a Boolean condition that you see at the rightmost uh, end uh, that is saying that i and j are two pairs of nodes and they have an edge between them. That is what eij stands for. And then you have another condition that says that ci and cj, here ci and cj correspond to the labels of these nodes i and j, that they must be the same. So taken together, this uh, generates all pairs of nodes that have an edge between them and also belong to the same class. And then just next to it, you see there is a for all i comma j, which is basically going over all pairs of nodes and identifying what are the pairs of nodes where this condition holds. So taken together, this gives you a set uh, of pairs of nodes and then we finally perform some kind of an aggregate function similar to your relational database query like count and average and sum and so forth that takes the set and returns a real number. Here we use the count aggregate function which actually returns the cardinality of this set. So taken together, uh, this uh, query computes pairs of nodes uh, that have an edge between them and also uh, have the same class labels for these two pairs of nodes. So having defined uh, what an aggregate query is and what it looks like, let's look at a suite of different aggregate queries and see how they can uh, capture a wide variety of uh, global graph properties. So the simplest is the accuracy metric. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a locally decomposable metric. It looks at each node in isolation. Uh, and the way to represent it is as shown here. So you're basically counting the number of nodes where CI is equal to CI star. Here CI star refers to the actual ground truth. And so whenever the inferred label is the same as ground truth and then you compute it, uh, you get uh, some kind of a measure of accuracy. Next, a slightly more complicated uh, AGQ that goes over pairs of nodes is edge cohesion, as we saw before. This looks at pairs of nodes that have an edge between them uh, but also have the same uh, class label. This is an edge-based uh, query. So similar to the previous query is the edge separation query. This, like the previous case, looks at pairs of nodes. This is an edge-based query. Uh, but unlike the previous setting, it looks at it asks for the number of uh, edges that uh, connect nodes with different uh, labels associated with them. So moving on to more complicated uh, graph queries, uh, next we look at the diversity of influence query. This captures what is called as the k-core nodes in a graph, uh, and it measures the number of nodes that are present in a graph that are connected to uh, neighbors uh, that have uh, at least half the different uh, node labels associated with them. So these are very crucial nodes that kind of go across different communities. Uh, another interesting graph property is the exterior document, uh, which measures the number of nodes which have half its neighbors belonging to uh, different uh, categories. This is uh, captures the property called monophily, uh, which is the uh, cousin of uh, homophily. Uh, so an inverse of this is the interior documents, which captures homophily uh, and asks the question, how many nodes are there uh, that have at least half its neighbors belong to the same category uh, as the given node? As I mentioned, this captures uh, homophily. So here I've shown uh, the suite of uh, graph queries that I talked about. Uh, as you can see that as we move to the right side, we are looking at nodes that have a very similar neighborhood, which belong to the same classes. And as we move to the left side, we are asking, uh, uh, nodes that are kind of edge of these clusters where they actually belong to a neighborhood with very different node labels. Uh, also on the y-axis, you can see that these uh, queries can get more and more complex. 
Uh, the simplest is the accuracy metric, which just looks at a node in isolation, and its separation and its cohesion looks at pairs of nodes, and diversity of influence looks at the entire neighborhood uh, of a given node. So having talked about uh, degree, uh, different aggregate graph queries, let's uh, next talk about how to estimate them. Uh, and the reason we need to estimate them, as I mentioned before, is because we do not observe all the node labels. Some of them are missing. So we need to first uh, somehow infer these missing labels and then uh, compute this query. So the first, as I mentioned, is probably the simplest one, is the point estimate approach. So the way the point estimate approach works is first you train a classifier to infer the missing node labels. You can use the node labels of some of the existing nodes to train this classifier. And once you've trained the classifier, you can impute the values for these missing node labels. Once you have done that, uh, you have you know, the completely observed graph, and then you can compute this aggregate graph query uh, once you have the finally uh, completely observed graph. Another approach that you could take is the expectation-based approach. Uh, so the problem with the previous approach is that it does not capture the uncertainty in the node label. At every point of time, you are forced to make a judgment call on picking, okay, this is the most likely label, so I'm going to assign that and then compute this uh, uh, aggregate graph query. However, uh, if you want to capture the uncertainty in these node labels, you could do what is called an expectation-based approach. So what expectation-based approach does is first you try to infer a joint distribution over the missing node labels. Once you have this distribution, you can compute the aggregate graph queries as an expectation over this distribution. What is the expected value of this query uh, over this distribution? And so now you are able to capture the uh, uncertainty in the node labels, which you weren't able to do it before. So we have these two approaches. Uh, which one works better? So first, before going into the empirical evaluation, here is a theoretical analysis of it. Uh, for more details, please refer to the paper. But what we show that in our paper is that even for simple graphs with just uh, two nodes generated using stochastic block models, uh, even for the very simple query that I talked about edge uh, cohesion, uh, we can actually show that uh, point estimate approaches cannot uh, minimize the expected mean square error. Uh, and this is simply because they are unable to capture the uncertainty. You're making these hard judgments about what the node labels are, and therefore you cannot uh, minimize uh, the expected error. So, uh, so now we know expectation-based approaches are kind of you know, somehow better than point estimate approaches. Uh, so how do we go at computing them? So statistical relational learning based approaches uh, usually define a joint distribution over these uh, in unobserved uh, variables, and, and then we can use them to infer these aggregate graph queries. So two of the most popular approaches are uh, Markov logic networks and probabilistic soft logic. So one issue with these are that even though you have a joint distribution, because these aggregate graph queries involve the entire graph, uh, computing these expectations are intractable. They involve either a summation over all different possible uh, values for these node labels or an integration and computing this is intractable. So the obvious way uh, to overcome this is to perform what is called as Monte Carlo approximation, where you use some kind of a sampler, typically the Gibbs sampler, to generate samples from these joint distribution and then approximate the expectation using these samples. Uh, so the way Gibbs sampler works is uh, you first have a way to sample from the conditional distribution and then you kind of repeatedly uh, sample from the conditional distribution of each random variable given everything else. And then this is shown that after some point of time, this converges to the actual joint distribution, and then you can uh, use these samples. One issue though is unlike MLNs, which uses uh, Boolean random variables, uh, PSL is a continuous distribution and the conditional distribution is very hard to sample from. So in our paper, we circumvent this uh, problem uh, by incorporating a metropolis sampler inside the Gibbs sampler. So the so way we sample from each conditional distribution is first we generate a uniform sample and then we perform an acceptance rejection test and only accept it if the sample falls within some ratio. And this is guaranteed to generate a sample from the joint distribution uh, after uh, some time. 
So now we have a way to compute uh, these aggregate graph queries as an expectation and also as uh, using the point estimate approach. So now let's evaluate them empirically. Uh, in particular, we are looking at four research questions. One is what is the performance of these expectation based approaches compared to point estimate approaches? Next, we look at what is the effect of the amount of label data on performance of these approaches. Uh, we'll also look at what is the trade off between uh, computing these aggregate graph queries and also locally decomposable metrics such as accuracy. And finally, we look at what are the implications of runtimes when using these two uh, different approaches. So we evaluate uh, these different approaches on three benchmark data sets, Cora, Sightseer, and PubMed. Uh, here are the statistics. So as we can see, we have uh, a small data set such as Cora with 2000 nodes, but it has a large set of uh, categories. Uh, and then we have slightly larger data sets such as PubMed, which have about 20 different nodes, and it has only three categories and a smaller set of attributes as well. So in this talk, I'm going to show you results for Cora. For the other data sets, please uh, refer to our paper. So we look at three different sets of approaches. One is a non-relational uh, approach, logistic regression. Then we look at several SRL-based approaches, uh, in particular PSL and MLN. So these approaches can either be used to perform a point estimate approach where you actually use the mode of the distribution. Uh, here I call them as PSL map and MLN map, or you could also use an expectation based approach uh, where you compute the expectation uh, using the samples generated. Here I call them as PSL sample and MLN sample. Finally, we'll also look at graph neural network based approaches. In particular, we look at three uh, kinds of graph neural networks, graph convolutional networks, graph attention networks, and graph Markov neural networks. So these uh, graph neural networks uh, usually do not define a joint distribution. And even if they do, uh, because of issues in kind of performing inference over these joint distributions, they make some kind of a mean field approximation. Uh, and hence, we are unable to compute uh, expectations using uh, these approaches. So uh, we will be using them to only perform point estimate based approaches. Uh, so here are the uh, empirical uh, results. So we compute the query error, which is the uh, uh, difference between the computed value minus the actual value for each of these queries uh, normalized uh, suitably. Uh, so the query zero is actually the accuracy and queries one to five are the different aggregate queries that we defined. So there are a lot of numbers, but the main takeaway is that uh, when it comes to these aggregate graph queries Q1 to Q5, we observed that uh, expectation based approaches, PSL sample and MLN sample uh, generally perform uh, much better than these point estimate approaches. Uh, in particular, we see PSL tends to perform better than MLNs. This is because PSL is actually a continuous distribution and can capture uh, uh, a lot of uncertainty. Next, uh, coming to just the uh, query zero or the uh, accuracy, we actually observe that uh, point estimate approaches, in particular graph neural network based approaches tend to perform better. Uh, this is because uh, they can actually uh, make use of these attributes to learn a very good representation, uh, and this helps them, uh, you know, perform better when it comes to accuracy. Uh, coming to the queries itself, we actually observe that queries Q1 and Q5, which kind of look at very similar neighborhoods, which are asking questions like, how many nodes are there that live in a neighborhood with very similar class labels? Uh, they tend to be easier to estimate than uh, queries that talk about dissimilarity or things about uh, nodes present in the neighborhood with different node labels. Uh, coming to effect of training data, we observed that as we increase the amount of training data, uh, the performance on accuracy improved. However, what we observed was as we increased the training data, the query error for some of the uh, graph neural network based approaches actually increased. To investigate this further, uh, we computed the error in the Homophily metric. Homophily metric is the ratio of number of edges between nodes with the same class label to the number of edges with uh, nodes with different class labels. We observed that this error uh, increased as we increased the training data. Uh, 
this suggests that there was a very strong label propagation uh, and hence hurting the performance on uh, aggregate graph queries that dealt with uh, neighbors with uh, different labels. Finally, coming to uh, the runtime performances, uh, we observed that uh, point estimate approaches are much faster, uh, as you can imagine, because there is no sampling and sampling actually is a time consuming process. However, between the two sampling based approaches, we observed that uh, PSL samples uh, are much faster to generate than MLN samples. So in conclusion, we in this talk have motivated and proposed a suite of aggregate graph queries. I've showed that point estimate approaches uh, that infer missing values uh, actually leads to poorer performance both theoretically and empirically. Uh, I've proposed a novel uh, Gibbs sampler for PSL that is faster than existing sampling based approaches. And, and through empirical evaluation, I show that exp uh, expectation based approaches perform better than uh, point estimate approaches. As a future work, uh, it will be very interesting to look at these neurosymbolic approaches that actually combine both uh, the statistical relational learning and graph neural network based approaches. Uh, in particular, we could make use of the representational power of graph neural networks and incorporate them uh, into SRL approaches as a predicate so that we could also define a joint distribution over them. Thank you.